Hi, got a few minutes? This video scribe summarizes some, but not all, of the key issues in the topic on earnings management. To talk about earnings management, we must first consider the alternative. Cash accounting recognizes only those transactions that involve cash. It's easy, it's verifiable, and it doesn't require judgment, but it ignores some very important information. Accrual accounting, on the other hand, does involve judgment and choice. Depreciation, inventory valuation, asset revaluation, etc. all require adjustments to cash flows to provide information about real financial position and performance. For example, buying a car involves a cash outflow, but no change in financial position. One asset has just been exchanged for another. It's through depreciation that accountants recognize the progressive decrease in the service potential of the car. So accrual accounting and accounting policy choice are the basis for earnings management, and earnings management is about conveying information to external parties. From this perspective, earnings management is good. It can be described as reasonable and legal, intended to achieve a stable and predictable financial result. Income smoothing is an example of providing stable and predictable financial results by shifting earnings from peak periods to less successful periods. This can be used to increase earnings quality. Earnings quality is about whether the earnings that we report now are consistent with future earnings. Check out this graph. Which arrow do you think provides the best prediction of future performance? But whether judgment and choice is used for good or bad depends on the motives of the manager. If used opportunistically, earnings management is about managers using their discretion to manipulate cash flows, structure transactions, and change the way transactions are reported in order to mislead some stakeholders about the underlying economic performance or to influence the contractual outcomes. One motive that managers may have to be opportunistic in earnings management is to increase their compensation. The bonus plan hypothesis recognizes how the specifics of the bonus plan create incentives to either increase or decrease profit in a particular period. Managers may also engage in earnings management to avoid breaching debt covenants, to increase share price or decrease share price, or to write off underperforming assets and reduce profit in a period where the blame can be placed on a past manager, restructuring, or some external event. Taking a big bath makes it easier to report a profit in the future and provides a lower benchmark to be compared against. So that's why CEOs often do it in their first year. With all these potential benefits from opportunistic earnings management, why do managers ever use their discretion for good? Well, perhaps managers just are inherently good. But it helps to recognize that there are also some other incentives. The manager's reputation and the reputation of the firm depends on honestly signaling the true economic condition of the organization. The market for managers and the market for shares doesn't like to be deceived, and regaining the trust of those markets can be difficult. I hope you found this video scribe to be a useful summary of some of the key issues associated with earnings management, recognizing that earnings management may be good or earnings management may be bad. But really, the video scribe is just intended to remind you of the things that you learned in the textbook, the lecture, and the tutorial. You should return to those sources to clarify anything that is still unclear. Cheers and happy...